German Shepherd Dog History One chance encounter was all it took for the German Shepherd Dog to be created. Max Emil Friedrich von Stefanitz, who was raised in a wealthy family in middle-class Germany in the mid-19th century, spent time at the veterinary school in Berlin because he was so interested in studying agriculture. Instead of giving in to family pressure and becoming the gentleman farmer of his dreams, he enlisted in the military as a cavalry officer in the German countryside. Von Stefanitz grew to respect the intelligent, quick-thinking sheep herding dogs he came across. However, the population of these exceptional sheep dogs started to decline as modernity spread and grazing land gradually disappeared. Before they completely vanished, von Stefanitz made the decision to develop a formal breed of German sheepdog and acquired a sizable estate close to the Bavarian town of Grafath to raise them on. Von Stefanitz and his friend Arter Mayer went to one of the biggest dog shows in the nation in April 1899 as a result of their ongoing search for breeding stock. Hector Linksreen the dog was there when he saw him. The four-year striking, Old's wolf-like appearance undoubtedly caught von Stefanitz's attention at first, but his intelligence and depth of character made the decision for him. Von Stefanitz referred to him as a gentleman with a boundless zest for life. Von Stefanitz was so impressed that he gladly paid the dog's price of 200 German gold marks right away. This prized acquisition received a new name, Horen von Grafrath. And, soon after, a new identity from von Stefanitz, with the support of three shepherds, two factory owners, a mayor, an innkeeper, an architect, and a magistrate. Von Stefanitz and mayor established Verein für Deutsch Schäferhund, the first German shepherd club in history, within a month. Horan was officially designated as the first German shepherd dog by receiving the inaugural registration number SZ1. Beauty and Brains the craze for distinguishable breeds was at its peak when von Stefanitz started attempting to standardize Germany's numerous herding dog flavors. However, for centuries prior, the guiding principle had been as simple as possible. Beauty is as beauty does. No matter how it looked, a good sheepdog was still a good sheepdog. However, regional and local dog breeds did naturally evolve, and von Stefanitz used these traits to create what he thought to be the ideal German herder. Horen who had just received a new name, was from Thuringia, in northern Germany, where canines of his kind were typical. Horin was not a one-off. Friedrich Sparwasser in Frankfurt had carefully bred him with an eye toward achieving the upright ears and wolf-like body type that so many fanciers admired. Both of Horin's parents and both of his paternal grandparents were later registered as German shepherds, as well as his littermate brother Luch and other members of his immediate family. The Thuringian dogs, on the other hand, were typically smaller and stockier, with wiry coats, curled tails, and incisive personalities. Von Stefanitz believed that crosses to the larger, heavier boned, and more tractable dogs from Württemberg in southern Germany would provide him with the compromise he was looking for. Von Stefanitz believed that a dog's ability to work was just as important as its appearance, and he strongly disagreed with those who wanted the breed to be nothing more than a fashion statement. Even today, when German shepherds are judged at dog shows, the judge quickly assesses each dog's temperament to ensure a stable temperament. From von Stefanitz's perspective, Horin had already attained perfection in that area. Von Stefanitz described Horin as although untrained in his puppyhood, yet obedient to the slightest nod when at his master's side, but when left to himself, the maddest rascal, the wildest ruffian, and an incorrigible provoker of strife, highlighting the breed's high level of energy that needs to be channeled. Never idle, constantly on the go, friendly with good people, but not a crotchety person, mad at kids, and always in love. The service and war dog. Horan was heavily used at stud by von Stefanitz, who vigorously linebred on him to improve the traits he valued so highly. Because of the success of some of those progeny, particularly his three grandsons Heinz von Starkenberg, Beowulf, and Pilot, nearly every German shepherd alive today has some degree of Horan blood in them. 
the German military had not yet fully understood the value of war dogs, despite the German Shepherd being created, as the Great War was about to break out. Von Stefanitz lamented that Horin had never had the chance to establish himself as a superior service dog, and relentlessly and successfully promoted his fledgling breed. As such, if we had at the time had military or police service training, he rhetorically questioned what could not become of such a dog. Anti-German sentiment and evolving semantics were brought about by World War I. The German Shepherd Dog Club of America was ordered by the American Kennel Club to change both its name and the name of the breed. By the deadline, the club changed its name to the Shepherd Club of America and similarly dropped the word German from the breed name. The British gave the breed a new name, the Alsatian, in return for the American response. However, the Shepherd's reputation as a combat dog spread after the war, and canine movie stars like Rin Tin Tin and Strongheart, both of whom had served in the military, ensured the breed's explosive global popularity. In 1930, when Geraldine Rockefeller Dodge, the show's benefactress, and a German Shepherd breeder herself invited von Stefanitz to serve as a judge at the renowned Morris, an Essex Kennel Club show American fanciers first met him. Von Stefanitz had to judge both sexes over the course of two days due to the overwhelming number of Shepherds who entered, and in the European tradition, he wrote a critique for each. The German Shepherd always evoked feelings of nationalism in its native land because of when and where it developed, and as World War II drew near, the breed healed submissively through some of its darkest moments. Due to Hitler's steadfastly devoted dog prince, German shepherds captured his attention, and other Nazis soon joined the club. Von Stefanitz resisted the changes, or perhaps the loss of control, despite the fact that he was a man of his time, and thus susceptible to the pervasive anti-Semitism, as some of his writings regrettably attest. Von Stefanitz eventually had to resign from the club and passed away in 1936, one year later.